All right, Jess, let's get to our beloved Bishop Joseph Strickland. Who is the bishop investigating Bishop Strickland on behalf of the Pope? Let's get into that, Jess. So in order to understand the gravity of this situation, yeah. you need to know about former Bishop Gerald Kikanis of Tucson, oh, Arizona. Brother. Yes. And the controversy that surrounded him for many years. Yep. By now you've all heard the, the, the news of the Vatican's investigation into Bishop Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas, a bishop who has, at least for Orthodox Catholics in America, taken on the mantle of Bishop Fulton Sheen as America's bishop. That's right. For those who have been aware of Pope Francis' reign of terror in the Vatican and, and Sheen, for example, number one, the cancellation of Cardinal Raymond Burke. Number two, the shunning of Cardinal Joseph Zen. Number three, the shocking rebuke of Cardinal Robert Seurat. <laughs> Number four, the dismissal of Cardinal Mueller. Number five, the news of this investigation into Bishop Strickland, not surprising and certainly full of foreboding. The latest news we have at this time about the visitation phase, where the Vatican had Bishop Dennis Sullivan of Camden, New Jersey, and former Bishop Gerald Kikanis of Tucson, Arizona, is that the interview portion is complete. But in order to understand the gravity of this situation, you need to know about Bishop Kikanis, a former auxiliary bishop of Chicago. Kikanis was the head of Catholic Relief Services back in 2012 when they were funding pro-abortion groups. When LifeSite and American Life League pointed out that CRS, Catholic Relief Services, was funding major pro-abortion groups like Population Services International, which markets abortion drugs in the developing world. He, Kikanis, defended the 2.7 million grant to the abortion giant saying, oh, it was for malaria prevention. <laughs> and then Kikanis bashed Life site news for misinformation. <laughs> and Kikanis even cut a major Catholic Relief Service printing contract with the husband of the head of the American Life League in retaliation. That makes sense. <laughs> oh now, <my> gosh. <laughs> at the U.S. Bishops Conference back in 2018, Bishop Kikanis was, am was among a rat pack of bishops and cardinals wanting to change the bishop's voter guide to downplay abortion as a primary concern. Joining Kikanis was a who's who of the most unfaithful bishops in America, including Bishop, now Cardinal Robert Mac McElroy, San Diego, Bishop John Stowe of Lexington, Kentucky, and of course, Chicago Cardinal Blaise Supich. But Kikanis was bad news long before <laughs> everything that I've just told you. Oh, yeah. Already back in 2006, pro lifers in his diocese of Tucson, Arizona, were concerned about him supporting pro abortion politicians. And remember, back in 2010, Kikanis was all set to become the president of the USCCB. Boy, do I remember that. <laughs> the homosexual pushing rainbow sash movement endorsed by him. Mm -hmm. Kikanis was vice president, and it was customary to go from vice president to president. But he was so controversial that Cardinal Timothy Dolan was appointed instead. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> However, Kikanis' history on um, priestly sexual abuse was likely the final nail in the coffin of his failure to be approved to take the top spot in the USCCB. And before becoming Bishop of Tucson, Kikana served as a rector of Mundelein Seminary in Chicago. <laughs> During his time there, he allowed future child molester 
Father Daniel McCormick to be ordained despite allegations of sexual misconduct. Terry, you want to pick it up from there? Yeah, and I know Bishop uh, Kikanis because I'm originally from Tucson, Jess, and my cousins said this guy's a disaster to the diocese. They, they went and bankrupt the diocese. So Bishop Kikanis recently defended himself against the allegations of wrongdoing by saying, I never received any allegation, report, or concern about McCormick during his seminary years at Mundelein that involved sexual abuse of any one. But the National Catholic Register, these are documents, have pointed out that Kakanis was at least aware of McCormick engaging in consensual homosexual acts while intoxicated, if not actually illegal abuse. According to the NCR article, Kakanis commented on these early experiences by saying, evaluation indicated that the nature of the experience he had related was experimental and developmental, although it indicated that the drinking might be a concern. Yeah, he said, I'm really concerned about his drinking when the guy's acting, acting as a homosexual ax. I mean, if this guy's, uh, and this guy's going to come and, and uh, evaluate Strickland, I'm sorry, that, that just doesn't make any sense. So that is who Pope Francis sent to investigate Pope Bishop Joseph Strickland. And that just, you know, earns me because I'm like, wait, wait a minute, why would you put a fox in charge of the chicken coop? And this guy is not a guy of high character. So, you know, I just question that, right. Jesse. Yeah. Because like like most good men, good bishops are very trusting people. And therefore, they do not suspect ill intent of those who they meet. However, among those who are living corrupt lives, okay, their suspicion is the name of the game. They tend to distrust everyone, distrust everyone, because they themselves are not worthy of trust. So when you have a man like Bishop Kakanis doing the investigation on Bishop Strickland. Yeah, to say the least, it's very, very concerning. Jess? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about it. It's just like, what? This guy is a disaster. First of all, he's going to, his bankrupt, bankrupt diocese that he uh, ran himself is now questioning Strickland, who has a stellar uh, track record financially. Uh, vocations are going through the roof for their diocese. Again, Tucson, zero. So you've got a guy who doesn't have what I call credibility. You know what it reminds me of, Jesse? When I played ball I, and, and some hitting coach would come in and the hitting coach never played baseball. And when he did play as a little kid, he was he never made it to the team. He always sat on the bench. And now he's going to give me pointers on how to hit baseballs. It makes no sense. Continue. Yep. The, to me, the, the, the best p line is, is this paragraph. Okay. Again, I know you read, is it, like most men, good men, yeah. good bishops are very trusting people. I know you, yeah. but it's, it's worth saying again. And therefore, sure. do not suspect ill intent in those they meet. However, those who are living corrupt lives like Hecanus, yeah. suspicion is the name of the game. Yeah. They tend to distrust everyone yeah. because they themselves are not worthy of trust. Yep. That describes these modernist bishops like Kikanis. Exactly. So when a man like Bishop Kikanis doing the investigation on Bishop Strickland, boy, oh boy, Houston, we got problems. <laughs> While Bishop Strickland might believe it's going to be fair, I, I find that hard to believe. So does Terry. Yes. Rather, we think that from our experience of watching these things play out over the last you know, Terry, 40 years, me, 30 years of apostolic work and ministry. Yes. Uh, bad. Here's, here's what I see, Terry. Tell me, Jess. Bad bishops, bad bishops conspire against good ones to have them removed. Isn't that what we've seen? Yeah. And this is a concern we have, Jesse. And I think that Canon 212 gives us this power to ask the question, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why are we going after a good holy bishop when you've got so many dioceses that are not doing any vocations that they're, they're dying they're getting financial problems there's so many out there like that and then they go after the good guy i i question what's yeah. going on as a layman i'm saying time out let's evaluate what is here and i think most people who have their eyes open will see that this is a travesty yeah bishop strickland is a hero for <laughs> to all all of us orthodox catholics in america he not only stands for life and family, faith and freedom with dignity and a deep love for Christ, he's courageous even when he knows it may cost him. This, this, that's what saw him come that's right. to Los Angeles, a diocese that he has nothing to do with, really, right. to defend the dignity of Catholic nuns and pray for deliverance. 
a from anti an anti Christian spirit invading America over Catholics there. His great love for the faithful and for Pope Francis is what led him to publicly correct the That's Pope right. That's a love. That's that, true love. Yep. It, it is time for me to say that I reject his program of undermining the, the deposit of faith, follow Jesus, close quote. In other words, what's he, what's he talking about, uh, Bishop Strickland, that Pope Francis is trying to, uh, uh, his program of undermining the deposit of faith? I'll give you an example of what that looks like. The synod of synodality. Yep. Check. How about the three Abrahamic religious temples built in Abu Dhabi? Check. Check. What about the Pachamama idolatry? Check. Check. What, what about teaching don't proselytize other religions? Check. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, pray for Bishop Strickland. We've got the novena going on Our Father. A Hail Mary and a Glory Be and some act of charity for nine days starting yesterday for protection. we got to go to bat for our bishops.